Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Mark Whelan from Enterprise Ireland, and I'll be your host for today's Technology Insights webinar. So uh, a big welcome to you all today for our fifth in the series of these uh, webinars. Uh, and today's is presented by Paul McCartan and Fergal O'Rourke from the new Credit Technology Gateway in Dundalk IT. Uh, and today's topic is energy optimization and innovation for business. Um, also with us is Dominic McLernan, who is the new Gateway Manager in Credit. And just going to give them a couple of minutes before we start today to introduce themselves as they, knew, as, as they are the new Gateway in the network. Um, as, as with all the other webinars, the intention of this is that it's an educational tool for people to understand more about the tools and techniques in energy optimization that can be applied to your business. Um, and just, I suppose, for housekeeping, just to let everybody know that this is recorded uh, and it will be available on our YouTube channel next week. Um, the, the, the schedule is that, as I said, Dominic and Paul and Fergal will introduce themselves in credit in a moment. Then Paul and Fergal will talk for about 25 minutes on energy optimization and innovation, uh, and that will be followed by about a 10 or 15 minute opportunity for a and a So uh, if you do want to ask or pose some questions, what you can do is use the questions uh, section on the um, right hand side there uh, and you can send that to all and people will see those and when we come to the time we'll start asking those questions. So uh, I'm delighted to, to introduce the guys from Dundalk and I'm going to hand over to, to, to them now to introduce themselves. Good morning everyone, hi so I'm uh, Paul McCartan uh, and one of the co-PIs here at DKIT. Um, so we're going to ask Dominic to uh, who's our new gateway manager, Dominic McLaren, to uh, introduce uh, himself. And then we'll go through some technical aspects, with myself and Fergal, and we'll come back to Dominic uh, at, at the end. So um, I'll pass over to Dominic. Um, hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Dominic McLaren, and, and we are the sort of new kid on the block when it comes to technology gateways. In fact, I'm, I'm just moved into this position in DKIT about the same time as the gateway started a few weeks back um, after a, a career in research commercialization in Ulster <clears throat> industry um, private practice and SME so I've been on both sides of the table so I, I do understand the dilemmas and the problems and the and the issues with with SMEs and accessing good quality technology solutions so we're on, we're on 16 gateways and uh, three uh, sectoral clusters and the, the tech gateway is is uh, delivers innovation expertise across solutions for Irish industry, but we're, we're focused primarily on the uh, renewables and energy development sector. So uh, you can see some of the some of the technologies where we we avail of uh, both on site and off site, uh, wind turbines and solar thermal and PV and and lidar devices, etc. As I say, um, we. In, in short, you know, gateway builds on credit research centers. So we're not starting afresh. Like myself, I have a good, strong background in this area. But the gateway has been here, uh, or sorry, the credit has been here for for best of 20 years, and, and you'll hear great examples from the, the two guys coming coming next. So our key themes are renewables, energy research, and energy optimization and modeling, wind energy storage, bioenergy, tidal and ocean energy. We're not necessarily stuck on those five, but that would cover 80% of our activities and if you have areas that which are in or outside of that that we have no issue in, in, in having, a, having a chat with you about. So we do both regional and applied research. We focus on consumer or customer experiences um, and you can't do research without the consumer or customer. And we link to real users and real communities like for example Dunleer, Sustainable Energy Community and the energy team there. So, um, so that's that's the team there. That's me in the top left, uh, a younger me, I think. Uh, that's Ray uh, over on the right, and the rest of the team who are coming up next are uh, Paul McCartan and Fergal O'Rourke, and the head of innovation and business development is Aidan Brown, and uh, our senior research again is Ray Byrne, and our technology transfer office is Neil McLaughlin. So we go next, uh, Paul. Um, we in short. You know, we provide the technological expertise in the field of renewables and energy optimization to generate the solutions for close to market needs of Irish industry. And we do that through the technology gateway. And we do that through using appropriate tried and tested tools like brokerage days, sand pits, information days, speed dating. Difficult to do in, in, in uh, that's technological speed dating, by the way. Um, <laughs> difficult to do in this, this era of, of COVID, but 
Yes, in, in, in better days we will open up and we will run you through the lab and take you to see our new kit, etc. We also develop shared intelligence across the gateway, signposting, and we build on existing relationships, of which there are many, and you'll hear about them now, and of course the new strategic matches. And, and the goal is to develop that stronger working group uh, support and support mechanisms to drive the credit gateway through the, through the next decade. So I'm going to introduce Paul. I'm going to let Paul speak for the next uh, few minutes and then uh, we'll, we'll move on to Fergal, one of our other PIs. So thank you, Paul. Thanks very much, Dominic. You can pop off your webcam there, I think. Um, so the credit technology gateway, um, as Dominic has introduced, obviously is based around our technical capabilities. Um, and we have, as a research center, been involved in energy and renewables since 2002. And we have a series of, I suppose, niche core capacities, but we have a broader set of experiences as well, which we can bring to companies to assist them in product development, in accessing this new uh, and emerging decarbonization market. And we'll speak a little about Enterprise Ireland's own supports for that towards, towards the end and how we'll link with that. But, but as we've all heard, I suppose climate change is on the agenda and every aspect of companies' activities has an opportunity for decarbonization. Um, and that runs from the sectors of, of electricity, which is a, a regulated market. It's regulated on the way in and on the way out, difficult to access. Um, but the heat and transport markets really offer huge opportunities um, and heating and cooling uh, being incorporated in that. And what we're looking at really in the future, <clears throat> excuse me, is, a, is an area of what we call power to X or, or, or sector shifting, whereby with an abundance of renewable electricity, we're going to be looking at putting that electricity into ele uh, heat or transport applications, which have relatively little uh, electrification as yet. So that's shown obviously in electric vehicles and in technologies like heat pumps. So really the opportunities in the future are huge, both for generating energy and for utilizing it correctly. And we'll, we'll go through our technical components now, and then we'll, we'll uh, show you some um, testing and trialing activities and product development we've conducted with companies previously. So <clears throat> the first thing that we try to do, obviously, is to be efficient. The efficiency is, is the first step, because if we don't waste the energy, then we don't have to replace it from a fancy technology. So realistically, with companies, the first thing for them to do is to begin to identify what their load profile is in the heat, electricity or transport sectors. And then once that has been um, identified, and that may involve installation of electricity metering uh, for a higher time resolution, uh, because the electricity bill will give you the, the kilowatt hours used in the, the month, um, possibly down to the half hour, again, depending on the size of the, the electricity user. But things like heat, very difficult. Um, can be very difficult to meter because it involves um, a lot of the time breaking breaking into the line. Um, so remote monitoring of heat is more difficult to do. So we've, we've undertaken a number of these uh, steps with companies over the years, and we have to determine the efficiency steps to be taken. And then after that, we identify the suitability of alternative technologies, because oftentimes the expenditure, the capital expenditure, isn't really that palatable to uh, the accountancy department because the payback times can be that bit longer than you would get with a normal piece of capital equipment. But as an example, uh, where we did an innovation voucher with the rural SME, just by looking at their tariff structures and changing them from a 24-hour rate uh, and looking at their energy profile, we were able to save 42% of, of their energy costs uh, in a year or about four and a half thousand euro just by changing their tariff structure. And this energy efficiency uh, and analysis is um, the key initial step um, to understanding and making savings for the company. It might not be the most attractive, but it is the most important because if we are looking to have an inefficient system and replace it with renewables, then a renewable system or an energy efficient system is going to be oversized. So we have to drop the energy required and then replace it with a fancy technology as we go along. So having done that energy and optimization step, the next step then we begin, we can also apply the context of modeling to that. So our modeling capacity really it takes the data set, whichever it may be, uh, and we apply our modeling techniques to that. That can be in energy, so we can model energy flows. But another example where we've, we've done modeling has been to use a finite element, or sorry, CFD to look at flows around 
particular structure, be it in a pipe in a hydrodynamic system, or in one case, an innovation voucher was done modeling the improved flow through a floating uh, tidal turbine with a relatively low current influence to it, about, about two meters per second. So what we can do with companies here is by, especially now with 3D modeling, um, with finite element analysis on the stresses of the structures, with CFD or flows around and in through the system. And now with rapid prototyping, one can assist a company to develop uh, a product fairly quickly uh, and really optimize that product before we need to start even building prototypes of, of functioning prototypes. So that can save an awful lot of cost um, and can assist specifically in the energy area with things like wind turbines. We have had various inquiries over the years for various different shapes and sizes of wind turbines. Uh, lots of uh, um, <coughs> home enthusiasts out there thinking that wind turbines are easy to build. Um, so, but this is the type of thing where we can assist and sense check ideas before we even get that far. Um, having mentioned wind there, I suppose, uh, once you get to the big wind industry, big industry in Ireland, offshore wind is coming on stream, it's going to be an even larger industry in the next few years. And really where we can assist uh, companies is in contextualizing their developments. So anything like a wind turbine is going to have to comply with standards. Um, there are design standards, there are operation standards, and there are also electrotechnical standards. And we have an interface to both of those sets. Uh, we represent Ireland at the International Energy Agency Wind Task 41, which is a specific international forum for discussing distributed energy, wind in, the, in a distributed energy context. And our turbine here at DKIT installed in 2005 is an example of that. Um, we would have more expertise in the area of auto production, which is behind the meter applications, whereby a, a generator is aimed at satisfying our own needs first, and then looking maybe to export um, when appropriate, but realistically the turbine was sized to um, give as big a contribution to DKIT as possible. So, and that has happened in the Cork Harbour area and in a couple of other uh, industrial locations around the country. And really there's a, a huge opportunity there for companies to decarbonize, be very overt in their green credentials and save money fundamentally given a good wind location and an appropriate installation. Links to standards development, Ray Byrne, as mentioned, our senior researcher, is a link between the IEC uh, TC88, which is the wind turbine standard, and the electrical energy storage uh, systems development standard. And these TCs, as they're called technical committees, of the International Electrotechnical Committee, uh, these are the people who really make the standards for which to which devices will have to comply. So that, uh, I suppose, route one into the development of standards can be important for companies before they start developing an answer to a question nobody's asked in a way. We can guide companies and say, look, this isn't really the way things are going to go in the future because we have access to these TCs and we can incorporate them. They can even represent uh, industry on these um, IEC committees. So that, that's an area where we've, we've worked with people before. So it, it helps companies to stay ahead uh, or at least in par with international um, competitors. Specifically on wind, then we have a, our ZX LiDAR, which is a, um, a specific wind measuring piece of kit, which we would deploy on wind farms. And we're going to buy a, a fairly soon a small piece of kit, which is a tower mounted uh, uh, LiDAR, which looks at a short distance out back of the turbine. Uh, and one of the reasons for this was came up in a, a, a I, in the in innovation partnership uh, technical feasibility um, project we, we did with Gale Tech Energy Services recently. And in this, what we were looking, we were using these particular tools to, to determine why, or potentially why, a turbine in a wind farm may not be producing what was expected. Um, much modeling and much analysis is done before a, a wind farm is designed, but once installed, these may not be operating as, as expected. So we're able to work with companies in terms of trying to analyze why that is. Now, there's a number of reasons. There could be what are called mesoscale effects, which are hills and things like that, which should have been identified originally. There could be turbine to turbine effects. And um, there can also be things like yaw errors. And in our case, we used our own wind turbine as a test bed. And given 10 years of use, we were able to uh, look at different yaw situations. So if the turbine isn't facing directly into the wind, it isn't producing the, the optimum amount of power or energy. 
Uh, and as a result, then we get reduced output from that turbine. So by looking at that, we did a study here with Gale Tech on our own turbine, just to see uh, what that kind of impact would be. And a small couple of degree error was shown to have a, a nine to 10 percent reduction in the energy output um, of a turbine. So on a large wind turbine, that can be 50,000 euros worth a year, which is a big uh, loss, potentially the amount of money it takes to service the turbine in a year. So um, that, for, for, and it wouldn't really be noticed unless one was looking at it and had the, the capacity to, to analyze that. So these are the kinds of specialist wind related research activities that we can undertake with companies uh, to optimize their systems um, and, and kind of take on this analysis uh, within wind farms. And then as we go forward into the, the bigger wind industry offshores, it's going to be a huge opportunity as well. Linked to wind then, we installed energy storage into Dock IT as an interface between the load and the resource. I've mentioned we measured the load, which is the uh, load profiling, and we have the wind resource, which is variable. It'll happen when it happens. So energy storage is really the interface between the two, making wind dispatchable, making it um, produce energy when the consumer requires uh, rather than when it just happens anyway. And that's a big issue in Ireland. 12% of Ireland's wind energy in 2020 was dispatched down, which means that it was essentially turned off due to constraint or curtailment issues over the uh, by air grid. So this is about an eighth of Ireland's wind energy is essentially turned off because there's nowhere for it to go. Um, it either can't get down the wires or it can't, there's no load for it to go to. So this sector shifting is going to be a huge area in the future. That wind could go into heating, it could go into heat pumps, which is a, a national uh, priority. Um, it could go into electric vehicle transport, and both of those being the domestic scale. At the commercial scale, we have looked at batteries on the campus. So the picture there of our battery compound in DKIT. And we also have an ice bank down in the corner, which is about one and a half megawatts thermal of ice, which is made at night when electricity prices are low and wind is more available. And that ice then is used to chill the Carroll's building in DKIT campus uh, through the HVAC system during the day. So these kinds of projects are live. I've been live in Dundalk for 10 years, basically. So we have a, a, a particular strength in being able to look at these kinds of areas. And the other aspect of energy research then is the microgrid. So we have a, a microgrid project with Energy Trading Ireland, an SEI one. And really what we're looking at is this flow of energy around a site and ideally on our side of the meter and how that is matched um, electricity heat and transport an example of that um, i suppose a more extreme one is a voucher that we did with lamb bay whiskey um, lamb bay island whiskey we're looking to develop a whiskey distillery on the island but the island has no grid connection so the PV solar, uh, the wind, solar PV and wind is their main generation type on the island, as well as a backup diesel generator. And that energy has to be stored in, in batteries. And, and that at the moment is a relatively small grid. But what we did with them was we looked at assessing the load profile currently and assessing the load profile when the distillery would be in operation, forecasting that. And I suppose developing a future rollout plan for the grid on the island. Um, as a, an island grid. So it's an off-grid system. Um, and developing the future plan for energy storage then, which is going to be one of the bigger issues because the wind resource on the island is very good. It's offshore and um, it's, it's got a very good wind resource. But how do we make that dispatchable? So that's the kind of stuff where we have particular expertise and we can assist companies. Now, this doesn't need to be an island for a company. Uh, once we're talking behind the meter, you're essentially an island. So your, your grid link as a company or as a campus or as a site is your meter point. And then behind that meter, there's a lot of optimization can go on um, and we can potentially assist uh, with that area as well. Um, we have specific uh, research activities in marine and bioenergy. Now, these both of these industries are potentially very large, but they just haven't got that uh, full kickoff just yet. Um, the marine industry, um, obviously Ireland's marine resource is huge. We have um, credit researchers have deployed a wind or a wave monitoring buoy uh, in the Galway Bay test site in 2019 for about eight months. When we modified an existing buoy with sensors and an oscillating water, water column, and 
trialing uh, units. So the idea here is that the boy begins to develop its own energy uh, while out there, thereby re reducing reliance on, on uh, solar, etc. cetera. Uh, and th there's a future in distributed IoT type devices in the marine sector. And um, so that, that area is, is also very, very uh, large potentially. We also have uh, bioenergy research in terms of anaerobic digesters, batch anaerobic digesters for biomethane potential. And really where that comes in is companies who have food companies, for example, who have food wastes um, or, or um, other um, companies which have bio-based wastes are potentially interested in the energy that can be extracted from them. So we can work with companies on that as well uh, to try to both reduce their carbon, close the cycle, make their um, their economy more circular, the circular economy whereby we, we use wastes as resources. So we can do that in this area too. Um, in terms of testing and trialing then, what we would say here is many products, as we've mentioned, have to achieve standards. They have to meet standards, especially in the electrical and, and heat areas. Uh, and those standards, while we don't test as an accredited lab to those standards, we can certainly conduct trials or tests based on those standards or alignment with those standards. So we can give feedback to the company on energy efficiency. We can also give feedback as an informed consumer. Um, we would pretend essentially that we're the customer. We don't necessarily have to know anything about the product. We wanted to do what it says on the tin. And in terms of a product arriving with us, we can identify issues that potentially could come up for consumers and refer that back to the company um, before that actually gets out into the market. So we, we do that quite a bit. Um, one of the examples of this would be where we've uh, assisted a company who were looking at displaying, I suppose, how effective their heat pump system was. So we metered a, a real life situation in terms of a, a crash. Um, and we were able to give the company feedback on the effectiveness of the heat pump in comparison to the other existing fossil systems, which were um, available at the time and, and that heat pump comparison then can be used as a promotional case study for the comp by the company with i suppose the oversight uh, and to some extent using dkit's uh, name saying this has been studied by the college as an independent um oversight and the system worked like this and we can provide then both the historical test results that we obtained because as a public body obviously they're they're available um, unless uh, unless we have NDAs for confidentiality and things like that. But, but ultimately, the aim would be to assist the company with the promotional materials to be able to make sales. I suppose at the end of the day, everyone needs to make additional sales. And in our area, so much of that is related to the technical understanding. So really, our gateway is, I suppose, that interface between the companies and the consumers uh, trying to make products maybe brought in or products which are developed in Ireland more consumer ready uh, and to assist companies to get that far. So um, I'll pass over to Fergal um, now who'll give you some further information on, on our other activities in development and product testing and development. Many thanks Paul, thank you. Um, my name is Fergal Rock, and I'm a co-PI in the credit technology gateway also. So um, I'm going to briefly run through a few um, product service examples. Um, that we undertook over the past few years. Uh, and the, the first of these is, is the slide we have here with, with, with Windhoist, um, which was a, an innovation voucher or two that we've, we've done with this company. And these, this company is, is a local company based in Monaghan, and, and they identified the need to develop a training service for, for the wind energy industry. Uh, the company already offered, say, health and safety and, and working at height training, and, and saw an opportunity to expand their offering. Uh, so the company contacted us at DKIT to, to develop uh, material and, and experimental designs for lab equipment and, and the like to, to meet the, the, the Global Wind Organization, or GWO, um, basic technical training standards that had been set out. Uh, the company now, um, as a result of this, and I suppose this um, training this, this training standard we talk about like you know have, have specialist areas in, in mechanical electrical hydraulics and installation and a large part of it's around the safety of those so the likes of hydraulics and the dangers associated with those and and, and, and electrical standards so the company now offer this training uh, to the wind industry uh, at their base in Airbine in scotland and, and this has been hugely successful from from feedback with, with the company since then um so what, what it really proved then was that you know the, the input from our research activities 
uh, within the research centre was instrumental in the development of this training material. You see expertise was available in, in the key areas of the, of the mechanical and electrical because of the, I suppose, the long and deep rooted um, background that we have in, in, in those key areas. Um, and another example on the on the next slide is is with um, a, a company called um, Tyrone Fabrication. And again, this was a this was a product and a system development with with um, that was developed through the Intertrade Ireland Innovation Boost Program, which was formerly called the Fusion Program. Um, and, and in this case, the, the idea for, for this project, the company had had a, had a capacity, had an excellent manufacturing capability, um, and and made and manufactured developed uh, telecoms cabinets. There were, there were the capabilities, CNC cutting, like all, all high-end um, manufacturing capabilities. So the direct access also to markets, um, so where remote off-grid power is sought after in places like Africa, um, where they were deploying um, telecoms cabinets. Um, so they had, they had these links um, to, to, to the actual markets themselves. So the company identified a requirement for, for off-grid power to supply these remote locations and for particularly for the, the telecoms um, you know the telecoms markets. So in collaboration with the company, we developed a hybrid power system, it's what you see here in the figures. So what, what I mean by that is you can see on the left this figure, you can see there's a wind turbine and that was linked with the panels on the ground beside it. This was kind of the prototype setup. Um, and then to the right, then you can see there's a, a cabinet that's that's containing batteries, and behind that cabinet there's a, a diesel generator as well. So all of these had to be combined. So there was, there was significant work had to go on around development of a, of a controller and a, a SCADA system um, to, I suppose, and, and an online portal so that you could tap into where these, these um, cabinets were located um, in remote locations and find out how they were performing. Um, so to, again, to, to, look at, to look at some of this, we could say before we looked at any design, we had to look at the sites, identification, um, and, and, and kind of look, looking at the, the resource evaluation again at those sites, like what, you know, some of the sites would be suitable for PV, maybe more so than wind, and other sites may be more suitable for, for wind and PV. So we had to try and get a good understanding of what would be the most suitable breakdown of the technologies that we would use. And um, again, access to grid was key as well, understanding like, you know, where, where the nearest grid connection was. So what, what, were we, what were we planning for at that case? So once we knew some of those things, we had some design stages where we looked at the system design and layout. So we're like typically looking at what size systems we were looking at there. So what, what is the capacity of, of each? Um, manufacturing assembly then, so developing the prototype and, and assembling it was probably the, the, the most important part here. And then extensive testing and data logging is, is something that, as Paul mentioned earlier, is something we have a lot of experience at doing and we've been quite successful in, in that area. Um, so again, system validation and modification, um, again, identifying any areas where it, where it needs, uh, needs attention, and then construction and final testing of the, of the final system. So that's, that's essentially what happened with that. And that product and that system had, had, um, has, has gone on to, has to do quite well. I think it has had won awards and all that kind of stuff for, for the insight at the time. So the, the, the next example I'll just give you is, is an example from a, a local company, again, around the, the Monaghan Cavern area. Um, again, it's a product development and evaluation product. Again, this is our work with a company called uh, Pure Heat Technologies. So again, this work, um, again, what was key for the company was their, their, their work with Enterprise Ireland um, and acquiring innovation vouchers and the value that they've got from that. So in, in this example, the company contacted us regarding um, an idea that they had to develop electric heating panels, very basic one. Initially, it was to install them in, in um, in suspended ceilings and you can see in the image here that it would fit into a suspended ceiling but they've gone on to develop this for it can be it can be um, located in, in numerous different areas and um, again they used uh, the innovation voucher scheme very effectively to, to get initial designs or some initial work and um, involving things like you know sourcing the materials and um, again looking at the appropriate designs so again, looking at different types of heating elements, for, you know, and then the, the kind of materials that are used for it, perforated faces, all, there, there was a whole bunch of stuff that went on to try and find out what was the most suitable um, arrangement of materials that would give you the most, um, I suppose, efficient output. Um, from, from that then, I suppose, prototypes were developed and the product um, on, undergone then extensive testing. Um, and for the work then involved, identifying the suitable standards and advice on, on CE marking. 
really. Um, and, and I suppose other work had gone on then as well in terms of, of, of working in the development of, of heating controls and heating control systems. So the system could be could be adopted either for re the retrofit market or for, for new builds. And they've been successful at, at, um, at commercializing this product and, and selling it and, you know, for, for a retrofit as well as, as for new builds. So, yeah, I'll pass it on to, to, to Dominic just to, to finish that off. That's okay. Thank you. Thanks, Virgil. Um, well, we've heard the expertise and you'll agree it's, it's considerable. So, you know, even though we're a new technical gateway, we're not operating from a standing start. And with the technical expertise, then we'll have to look at the financial and support tools. And we operate in the main through EI Enterprise Ireland Innovation Vouchers, Invest NI Innovation Vouchers for cross-border activities, Intertrade Ireland Innovation Boost, which used to be the Fusion Programme, again, a cross-border initiative. Uh, Interreg 5A Co-Innovate program, and, and I'm sure the new the new Peace Plus program, which is which is the new Interreg program, will, will have similar initiatives. And we also operate through local enterprise office technical feasibility studies, and of course uh, contract direct research. So Paul, if you go to the next, um, you may be familiar with Enterprise Ireland's new green and sustainable business, the green business offer. But well, we would sort of come in behind that and we would offer a, a technical support research as a backup. It's complementary. Each one of these initiatives is going to raise technical questions and that's where we have our strengths, supporting those technical questions around product optimization, product process, development, new ideas. And generally, you know, that's that's where our that's where our modus operandi is. You know, we can answer these technical research questions. So, I mean, when I, I mean, everyone has a different idea what research means, it, it means different things to different people, all things to all men and women. So, it's as simple as developing a new product or process, uh, or create a new product or optimize a new process. So, you have to ask yourself the question: um, Do you want access to a new business sector? Uh, do you have a bright idea for a new product or service? Would reducing your energy, energy costs be helpful? Um, do you need to optimize your performance, energy performance? Do you support business growth or do you wish to support business growth by adopting new practices, etc.? If you've answered yes to any or all of those and you operate in that broad themes that we talked about earlier, then Credit Technology Gateway can provide you with the technical support and the collaborative solutions needed to drive your business forward. And I've been in SME and I still am involved with an SME and I've been in that valley of death and I understand the dilemmas and the problems. And, and I know how to get out of them, and I know what the pitfalls are. So you've got a great team here, expertise, business management, you know, IP, et cetera. So, you know, if you like what you heard, Credit Technology Gateway is here. Um, so what are you waiting for? Get in touch, tell us if you liked it, tweet it. Um, we're, we're the contact details are there, and I'm, I'm the main point of contact. So I'm excited. I'm really looking forward to the future. and. Uh, um, we're happy to take questions going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Dominic Fergal, Paul. That, that's great. So we, we, we will take questions now if people want to, to start putting them on the system. So um, I, I have one or two already. Um, and I suppose this maybe comes back to maybe the case of, of, of Tyrone Fabrication, where it looked like you helped them develop a new business model as well. So I, I, I don't know who might want to take this, but do, do you help companies if they come in with that idea, they have a, a skill set that they recognize and you can see how that may develop into a product? which is what I assume was happening in Tyrone Fabrication and and how do you help then put that into a business idea? Yeah, um, well, I, I suppose the, the whole idea behind it was that they would, you know, they, they, they saw a gap in the market really for for, for this area. Like, you know, I, I, again, for that in terms of development, some discussions on it, um, I suppose decisions would be made, you know, at their, at their higher level to decide if that's something they want to bring forward. But, in some cases, we had we had in other projects as well where the systems never were brought any forward. Or they realised once they brought them to a certain point, but you know that that at that, that case, these reports can it, it can give you, give you two things. You can you can realise at the end of it that it, it's all going to work out, and uh, and you know it's a good business model to bring forward. Or it's a new expansion to business that might work well, or you you, you may find that it, it that it won't work. And it's not something that's, that's suitable now. Like there's examples where there's really good technical projects that we looked at, um, really suitable, but maybe 10 years too early. And, and in those cases, those those systems 
have been maybe put on the have been put on the back burner for the time being, and they'll be waiting for a time to be taken out of the out of the woodwork and be down the line, you know. So, yeah, like this, yeah, we, we we do offer we offer I suppose to answer the, the direct question. We do offer you know um, help and guidance in terms of development of of systems like you know that, that complement their own business model. Okay. Lovely. Uh, and a, a question from earlier on on the LIDAR. So um, can you explain in a bit more detail um, what the LIDAR is and what it does? So the LIDAR, um, Mark, is is a specific piece of equipment. Now, it's an industry standard equipment. Uh, LIDAR is used in a number of different industries now. Um, for example, cars will use LIDARs uh, to scan the, the road in front. So Tesla, for example, and other manufacturers. But our LiDAR um, uses the same scanning principle, but it points upwards um, into the atmosphere and can measure up to 300 metres uh, up. Um, and essentially, we get a wind profile at 10 heights over, over that um, area. So what they're used is replacing MET masts. Um, instead of put up an 80 metre MET mast, and you, you couldn't get a 300 metre MET mast anyway, uh, you're able to measure the wind in that location with the idea of putting in either a wind farm or wind turbine. Um, the LIDAR industry is changing quite a bit. Um, our smaller LIDAR, which uh, we're, we're getting soon, is, is this very small piece of kit that sits on, the, on top of a turbine. And it looks, as I said, in terms of the yaw correction, either at the front or, or um, at the front of the turbine to, to see where the wind is coming from. And then in the future, um, you know, the LIDAR industry we can scan all kinds of things. So really where it's useful is we're not going to be replacing the MET mast industry or the wind resource assessment industry. We have to be very clear on that because we're not going to be competing with them. That's a, that's a very established business and service that companies offer. Really where we can come in is, as mentioned, within a wind farm on, on troubleshooting. So there are particular areas where the turbine is underproducing, underperforming, People want to assess that it can either be mechanical or it can be related to the wind resource that it's seen. So uh, the research question there is what wind is the is the turbine receiving, um, and and that's really where we can complement um, the existing activities of of the wind mm -hmm. industry uh, as well. Um, uh, and that kind of device then is very low profile. Um, nobody knows it's there. It just sits on the ground, points upwards, um, and it's really you know, it's quite quite a low profile uh, piece of kit. Um, so it's available, and we we have we've got it through our Spire Two project. We're, we're working with farms, etc., on that, uh, and it's available for for uh, I suppose selection at, after this, uh, in through the gateway. Okay, another question: Is is there a threshold at which the the, the kind of technology you're talking about, wind farms and stuff? are uh, appropriate for SMEs. So, you know, is, is there a point where an, an SME could consider putting in their own small turbine or, you know, the other types of energy storage and production systems you're talking about? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And I'm more, much more than the domestic scale. Domestic scale turbines are difficult to uh, site correctly because of the proximity to houses, et cetera. But SMEs and, and even multinationals, um, as, as mentioned in the Cork Harbour area or Munster Joinery or, or other places, have installed their own turbines. Mead Potatoes have one. Um, and it can be a very good way of identifying your company as having a, an overt green uh, credential, but fundamentally it pays for itself. Now, the only issue with turbines often is that the payback time can be in the five to seven years territory, which accounting wise sometimes runs into issues but they're a long-term investment uh, they have a lifetime of at least 20 years design life and, and the dkit one has been in since 2005 so we're at 16 years now uh, and it'll probably run for another 10 before we have to start looking at that uh, and after that initial payback you're saving the industry money all the time the company is making its own energy the resource is free uh, and essentially once you have the piece of kit uh, you're making your own electricity and the, the other opportunity then is you can offset things like chilling, refrigeration loads and um, very appropriate use, potentially heat loads with heat pumps and um, potentially electric car charging. Now, that is a huge potential for um, for staff cars with company benefit and kind benefits for, for EVs and things like that. And there's no BIK on charging your car at the company. So you, you begin to unlock this whole, um, whole, of, whole of industry or whole of company um, sector shift really, where they're saying, no, we, we, we generate our own energy, we're being more self-sufficient, 
it's not going to supply 100% of the energy in the year, but we're at least heading down that road of uh, trying to satisfy our own needs first. So it, I, we think it's, you know, auto production, as I mentioned, or behind the meter applications have huge potential in Ireland. And some companies with good case studies to show where it's been done already. Okay. And, and a following that just comes through maybe on that. So are credit currently carrying out the load profile for SMEs or is it managed through somebody outsourced? We can do. Uh, we are currently doing load profiling. Um, depends on the time scale. Um, I, I won on for the, the last three weeks uh, at a food company. Um, basically, just to see what their, their profile is because they want to expand their PV installation. So load profiling is something, now we would have to put it in the context of a research question. Um, it, it can be, it would be contract research rather than just a service because obviously we don't want to displace companies that already do energy audits and things like that. So what we would be doing is we would be taking that slightly more advanced view and, and working with the company on a whole of, you know, a larger research question in terms of the decarbonisation strategy and um, a larger impact of that type of role. So we're not going to be just doing energy audits. Um, we'd have to put it in a research question context, but we certainly do it, yeah. Okay, so in, in that sense, another point somebody had raised, uh, that's probably one of my colleagues, is that the Innovation Partnership Programme is also useful. Uh, you can get those bigger type of projects and they can be multi-partner projects as well. You, you, you can do that. Um, in, in terms of scoping projects, uh, for example, maybe a voucher, how, how would you scope um, or, or how easy is it to scope something for a, a, a voucher type project? given the, the scale of the work you can do and the, the value of the project. Farrell, do you want to answer that? Yeah, yeah, I can take that. Yeah, look, oftentimes what we do is a company might contact us asking what, um, you know, they might have an idea. So it's it's a very vague idea. And it's, I suppose what we don't want to do is um, not, not encourage anyone to come. We like the idea of encouraging people to come to us and ask us, you know, I have this idea, what do you think? So we do is we kind of, we, we kind of scope out the idea, get an idea of what, what's going on with it and see if it's something that we can actually build upon. Um, and we can maybe we put something together, then we have supports there to help and facilitate um, applying for, for an innovation voucher, which is always an excellent place to start. You know, they can, and we have lots of examples where companies come in that might have an idea, but they're not really sure what they really want to do with it. And we can help with trying to, you know, put some sort of rigid boundaries, kind of, I suppose frame the research question that they're looking for, um, and maybe ending up with with maybe some sort of an output that that you know will lead them on, on a path to give them a better understanding of what it is they need. Um, so yeah, that, that, that would have happened with with a, with a lot of innovation vouchers that, that myself and say Paul and and, and and others within within the, within the gateway would have worked on in the past. We we have we have lots of experience of dealing with it. And sometimes that initial contact with the company is key, being able to oh, being yeah. able to. Um, yeah, you know, assist and guidance in that area, you know. Yeah, if I can add to that, if I can add that, sorry, Mark, um, this is a great vehicle to test good ideas, but it's also a great vehicle to test bad ideas. I mean, there's no better place than before you go to market to find out that something isn't going to work, and that's that's as good as as a good positive optimization voucher is something to say, like, this is not a good idea. So, you know, use yep. us for that. That, that is a good point. Um, the the other question, sorry, um, the, while you were talking, Fergal, was um, training. So how does training, uh, you, you talked about, I, I suppose the word you didn't use was educating people about uh, the, the things that go on. So how, how does that maybe help in, in terms of the other stuff? Yeah, well, what we, what we had there was the example I used with Windhuis was that was developing, helping to develop a service. Okay, so I was thinking in its own right, it's a product in its own right. Um, but we also can provide training, but not through the, the innovation voucher scheme. So that's, that's something separate. We, we can't do that. But we can do it as, as, as contract work. We are, you know, we'd often have companies that might come to us and ask us that, you know, they might want some help with, you know, a particular aspect of their business. It might be something in, you know, under, understanding how to use a particular technology. Um, so th th there's an array of, of training facilities that, that we can offer. Um, so again, that would mean either us going maybe to companies and, and providing that training on site, or in some cases, or in most cases, the companies coming to us and sitting with us actually, and, and maybe uh, like in small groups, or maybe they have a research team and they can sit with us and we can provide training with them. But again, that, that that's more contracted, as, as I mentioned, and, and less to do with the innovation voucher scheme in that case. 
Great. And, and, and one last question. I think it's something you mentioned earlier on, Dominic. You, you will, I assume, be offering tours and ability for people to come in and see that once the yeah, lockdown is over. It, it, it's, I, I'm firmly believe that we're going to come out of this in a, in a better, stronger, more normal um, situation. And absolutely, I mean, we've got a fantastic lab or we're building a fantastic lab. Um, over the next few months and, and years, and uh, we'd be very excited to take tours. And uh, you know, let let's see what the future holds. But listen, it's a very exciting place to be. Um, so we we'll look forward to it. Great. Okay. Well, listen. Um, I, the, the the time is is up as to what we said we were going to do now. So um, I'd like to thank all our presenters uh, for today. Um, as I said, the uh, the webinar has been recorded. You'll be able to see it on our uh, YouTube channel soon. So thanks a million to everybody and um, hopefully talk to you again. So uh, thank you and goodbye. Bye. Thank you.